All right, guys, what's up? So, thought I'd show you guys my blue LED conversion for my ICOM radio. So, this should probably apply to most ham radios or things LCD product. Let me plug this in so you can see what I'm talking about. This is my ICOM radio you saw in the newer video, a couple of videos. Hopefully, you're still in frame. So, turn that on and this is an older unit, it's probably about 20 years old, I think it's from the 90s, or early 2000s, I think 90s, I'm not sure, but um, as you can see that there, I have some dead bulbs on this side, and uh, it's fine on this side. So what I wanted to do was fix the lights, um, they're very difficult lights to find, but I mean, it, it's a, I mean I've already taken this radio apart once or twice, and it's, or actually once, um, and it's extremely difficult to get these bulbs out. And you'll see as I take this thing apart that I might even have to unsolder the LCD to get to it. But what I wanted to do was a blue LED conversion. And I have a couple different LEDs here. Um, uh, this is a 12 volt LED. It's a super bright LED, so it might be too bright. Um, that is, it's, it's diffused. So diffused means that it's. Um, um, that means it's kind of like uh, uh, dampened, I guess, or it's 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 not a uh, as clear, I guess. It's kind of sanded, I guess, or I guess I'm trying to figure out. It's it's not so bright. It's it's less bright. It has a bigger bigger distribution pattern, I guess. And then I also have some square LEDs. Put that on there. Well, these are like a, a smaller square LED. Um, they're smaller, but they're flat. So the 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 flat tip LEDs actually give you like a better pattern, like a 180 degree pattern. Well, 140, I'm not sure, 140, 180. Uh, viewing angles, 120 to 140 degree. So, these were a couple bucks. I bought these over at Fry's, a couple bucks. But, uh, I'll show you what's up. I'm going to fire a couple of these up and you can, you'll see the different colors of the LEDs here. So, give me a second. Alright guys, not sure if you can see that, but that's actually one of the reasons why I got that variable power supply over there. A little more focus on that one so I can actually test things like this um, so that's actually at 12.2 volts and actually I want to get this down to I can get it down to 11 I'll bring down the current I guess um, it would probably be about right the circuit that supplies the the main bulb it supplies uh, 11 volt. So this is the 11 volt one. I, I don't know if that's gonna. That's not. I don't know if that's too bright. So I'm gonna test it. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna put it behind the LCD and like if I actually use the 12 volt one, then I wouldn't have to put an inline resistor with it. So, but I probably want to sand it down to diffuse it a little bit more than it is now. So yeah. So I'm getting attacked by my kid here. Wow, this one's actually pretty bright too. This one's actually the three volt, the smaller one. Uh, this is the flat tip one. I don't know if you can see it. Um, but this actually one's pretty bright. It might be too bright. So, I don't know. That's why I bought both, so I can kind of mess with them. I can always actually lower the voltage down on this thing. and Well, we'll see. Let me see if I can bring this down just a tad bit. See if that makes it a little less. So if I actually wanted to make it lighter, like that, I'm turning down the amperage and the, um, see that, how it's barely going? I could just actually add resistors in line with it and control that, you know, that right there. So this is actually why I got this variable power supply, because I wanted to test things like this. So, I want to go 3, 3.4 is the max in this thing, so. Cool, oh, thought I'd show you guys that. Pretty cool, huh? Alright, so uh, I'm going to go back. I'm going to start tearing into this radio and get the board off, front board. So I'll kind of show you the process. Um, I know this is definitely not an easy one to work on, so all right, we'll be back. Alright, guys, so on this radio, um, you have to take the front and bottom covers off to get this the front cover screws here. 
Um, just make sure you, uh, I'm sure if you're watching this video, you're already an electronics person, but I don't know. Um, because there is some high voltage capacitors in this thing that you do not want to touch. All right, so what is next? Okay, I'm gonna take this off that so I can see the wires in there. Um, and take these side panels off and um, there's like little side panel screws here. Get the front cover off, at least loose, separated from the main chassis here. Um, okay, cool, I'm gonna keep on going and we got it. So I get to the uh, cover here. All right guys, so you got to got pop off all the uh, little knobs here, these little knob things that go there. And this should pop off, this little, this little rubber thing here. And then under this little rubber wheel, the tuning wheel, there should be, there it is, there should be, a, there's a little, I don't even know if you can see that, but there's a little Allen set screw. I don't know the exact size of it, but that just comes off like that. So, all right, kids watching me here. All right, cool. Now I can actually pop, there's actually uh, some pins. So the screws are on the outside here Wait, to hold the plastic what, on. Uh, so get that screws? on both sides. What screws? These screws right here. Yes, these screws? Right there. Yeah, these screws. Right there. Alright. Uh, yeah, and there's a couple of uh, rows of front screws. pins here. So you gotta get these off. Well, I know that screws. No, I, I can show you the LCD in the screws. front there. So uh, Alright guys. Yeah. It's funny is if you guys can see this right or not, but I have this powered on, but when I flick it, it comes on and off. See that? So I'm actually going to just re-hit the solder again and see what happens here. Mm -hmm. So, see that? That kid's mm -hmm. in the way watching me. Watch. See? On and off. Um, Alright, so, okay. I'm going to kind of see if I can hit with some solder. Hey guys, so what's weird, these things are impossible to get to. This, that's why you might, I might have to take this LCD panel off. There is some tabs that kind of go in here, but it just, the LCD is actually under this white thing, so I can maybe modify this white bracket. The way I didn't have to totally take it off, I think I might have to take the circuit board off or separate it. Or just pull the LCD off, one or the other. Yeah, this thing just comes right off. And actually, I noticed I had a bent pin on there, so I didn't know if I did that. I had a bent pin on this thing, so. That right there. You can see. I'm trying to get you guys to see I had a bent pin there. So. I did take this off once before, so I don't know if I did that or not, so. I don't know. Alright guys, I'm going to keep on playing with it. I might probably get that LCD off there, man. I don't know. That's a lot of <laughs> desolders, man. You can see my thing here. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that seems like it would be difficult, but I don't know what other way to do it, though. So, Well, I mean, I could kind of Separate that out. Pull the panel out. All right, I'll figure it out. All right, guys. So I have this little special little solder sucker. It's a hot soldering iron, and like a soldering sucker in one. It's a little bit more intricate than using just one of these little hand ones here that it doesn't have the tip. So cool thing is I can just if you can see that in the frame. Okay. I just basically heat it up, and I heat up the solder joint. This thing doesn't heat up as good as like a normal, normal solder iron does, but it suck. That's it. It's going to be a pain in the ass, but I have to get all these things off. I need to get this LCD off to get to the lights, man. So, all right. Yeah, it needs to be a nightmare. Um, so I don't know if you guys can see that, but down that's taking the solder joints off there. A lot of them, I might just have to use my heat gun really carefully to get the rest of it off just because I'm so close to that thing right there. Um, 
that little heat gun I showed you in the other video, that thing right there. So, um, yeah, because right now it seems like most of these things are, are, are ready to go. But, alright, let me try it. Cool. Alright, guys, got the LCD off here. Right there. So that's the LCD. Dude, it's gonna be a miracle if I didn't break anything, man. If this thing actually even goes back and works. So you actually have your LED here. And there's like a light, like a diffusing. Actually, that's like a yellow. Uh, that's, a, that's what makes it more yellow there, huh? That yellow thing. Alright, so I'm probably gonna get rid of that because I don't want it to be yellow anymore. So do you see that yellow, yellow, this little thing right here? This is actually what makes it yellow, so. Um, cool, I guess, I mean, I'm assuming. It's the first time I've ever done this, so. You were seeing what I'm seeing. Except I'm gonna have to make all these pins perfectly straight when I get that back in there. I'm a little worried about that pin right there, though. You can see that, I'm kinda missing a pin right there. But I don't know if that was off in the factory. I mean, I'll take a look for a missing pin, but I didn't see a pin in there, so I'll take a look, double check. But all right, now I can start messing with the LEDs. But oh, let me show you the light real quick. So what a dumb, what a stupid design, man. I don't even understand here. It's like, what? Why even do that? I mean, why make the lights so hard to replace? Like, there's no possible way you can get those lights off. So those are the four lights that light it up. So. Weird. So I'm going to replace those with some LEDs and see if it's, uh, get this thing going. I mean, I, I'll be surprised if this thing actually works when I put it back together. I'm going to go through, blow everything out, and make sure things in there tight, but I'm Trying to be as careful as possible, you know? Wow. All right. All right, guys. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. I don't know if you can see. Look at that. So what I'm, you see the LCD right there, LED. Um, I have the LCD in my hand. What I want to do is get the match, match the, the pattern, the light pattern, so it's bright enough and I don't have bright spots. Yeah, that's definitely not dark enough. So I have to take the self take the yellow lens out of there, but yeah, interesting. Uh, take that heavy yellow lens out of there. See the main difference here. Yeah, huge difference. But I don't know if you can see that, but you'll see like a light spot. See that right there? If I turn it major to the side. Down. So that's why I want to try to figure out before I put it back on there, like how much, you know, what's what's going to be up. I mean, how how good this is going to look. So it's, it's actually going to be about right there. But if I have it like this, it's totally gnarly. But let me give me let me grab the other LED real quick, and I'll show you the other one. All right, so this is that flat bulb that I had, the uh, smaller bulb. <laughs> okay, way better. <laughs> Except these, uh, I was, I, I did a voltage reading on my device, and it was only putting about nine. It's supposed to put out eleven. I'm not gonna put that too tight on there, but I have to I keep it like right there. I'll even sand the tip to make it so I see that bright spot, but yeah. No. <gasps> Ideally it'd be perfect right there. What if I go to the side? Go to the side might be a better option because I might have to get it pretty far in there. Like it's gonna be have to be probably into there, you know, like something like that. Mm 
It's probably not going to be perfect, man, but it's... I do like the blue, though. All right, guys. I'm going to play with it. Let's see. All right. 